Lesson 6, Equations with Decimal Numbers, and Consecutive Integer Word Problems. Sometimes when we're working with different equations, whether it be um, problems that are written in equation form or equations that we have to make out of word problems, we're going to be dealing with decimal numbers. Um, instead of solving the problems with decimals, we're going to multiply every term in the equation by a power of 10 in order to make all of the numbers whole numbers. Um, the way that we do that is we find the, the number with the largest number of decimal terms in it and we multiply by that power. All right. For example, if I had the equation All right, we have 3 thousandths x plus 4 tenths equals 2 and 5 hundredths. In order to solve this problem, I'm going to get rid of decimals completely. And by doing that, I'm multiplying by a power of 10, or essentially moving the decimal over each place. All right, so let's find the decimal term um, with the largest number of decimals. That would be 3 thousandths. All right, 3 thousandths has three decimal places. So I'm going to move my decimal over one, two, three places to the right. Since I've moved that one three places to the right, I need to move each term decimal three places to the right. And zero is still in those empty spaces. All right, so my new equation is 3x plus 400 equals 2050. Now I can solve without decimals, and my answer is still going to remain the same. All right, to solve this equation, we would subtract 400 from both sides. and divide by 3. So x equals 550. All right, so in these problems where we're dealing with decimal numbers, we want to move the decimal over to the right, essentially multiplying by our, a power of 10 in order to get rid of that decimal. All right, we're going to do a couple examples together, and then I'm going to have you finish up this one on your own. All right, the first problem, we're actually going to be taking the equation out of this word problem. You don't need to write the word problem down, we're just going to deal with the equation. All right, the students found that 15,000 of the teachers were either brave or completely fearless. If 300 teachers fell into one of these categories, how many teachers were there in all? All right, we have 15,000 of all the teachers. We're looking for the number in all. Okay, so we don't know what that is, but we do know that 15,000 times that total equals 300. All right, so the equation is going to look like this. 15,000 of all the teachers, and we'll call the teachers C, is 300. All right. Again, we have a decimal number. In order to get rid of that decimal number, we're going to move our decimal over three places to the right, since there are three places. One, two, three. And we also move this one, one, two, three, and fill in those empty spaces with zero. All right, so our equation now is 15t equals 300,000. And to solve for t, we just divide by 15. That will give us 20,000. All right, in an equation like this, where all we're doing is multiplying um, by a power of 10 in order to solve for t, all we need to do is divide. That wouldn't be a big deal to plug into your calculator, but when we get into more complex problems where we're dealing with fractions and decimal numbers in the same problem, um, and we need to make them whole numbers, this is when um, this is, this tool will come in handy. So we're going to try to get into the habit of getting rid of decimals now, so that when we get into the more complex question, um, it'll be a little bit simpler. All right, let's look at another example. An analysis of the old woman's utterances showed that 932 thousandths were decimal. If she spoke 2,000 times during the period in question, how many utterances were not decimal? All right, now, in these types of problems, make sure that we are finding the correct thing. All right? 932 thousandths were, we're looking for, were not. Okay? So this will come in handy when we, um, when we actually solve the answer to this equation. All right, but let's set up an equation first of all. It says 932,000 of her utterances were vicinal. We don't know how many utterances she spoke in all, but we know that 932,000 times all of that 
um, and she spoke 2,000 times during the period in question. All right, so we are we are solving for the number that we're not, but in order to solve for the number that we're not, we have to find the number that we want. All right, 932,000 of all the utterance were abysmal. She spoke 2,000 times. So 932 times the, that 2,000 times is abysmal. We're looking for how many were first. All right. Now, if we were to multiply this out, straight multiplication, we would come up with S is equal to 1,864. All right. Now, that is how many were abysmal. In order to find the number that was not, we would need to do 2,000 minus 1,864. This is going to give us the correct answer. Make sure that you're actually ask, answering what the question is asking when you're solving this problem. All right, so when we subtract 2,000 minus 1,864, we're going to get 136. And 136, we're not. Okay, and that is what we're solving for. So this one involves an extra step. All right, the next equation. The astronomers found that 17 thousandths of the stars examined were red dwarfs. If 29 thousand stars were examined, how many were not red dwarfs? All right, this is a problem very similar to the last one we did. So what I'm going to do is have you solve this one on your own, and we'll check it um, when we come into class tomorrow. Um, if you need to, go ahead and pause the video to solve, and then hit play when you're ready to proceed with the next little section. All right, the next thing we're going to be talking about is consecutive integer word problems. All right, consecutive integers meaning numbers that are one right after the other. All right, so we're going to be using let statements. Um, but we're also going to change this up a little bit. We're also going to be doing consecutive even and consecutive odd. Now, if we're talking about odd or even numbers, how many units apart are the odd numbers? All right, if we go from one to three, they're two units apart. Three to five, two units apart. All right, so consecutive odd integers are two units apart. If we're to look at the evens, two to four, all right, they're two units apart. Four to six. They're two units apart. All right, so those are also uh, consecutive even integers are also two units apart. All right, so when we set up our like statement, we need to keep in mind if they're consecutive, that means they're one after the other. All right, so our our let statements would say let x equal the first integer, and if they were consecutive, x plus one would equal the second because it's one right after the other. However, when we're going consecutive even or odd. When we write our let statements, it's going to say let x equal the first. But when we go to our second, even and odd numbers are two integers apart. So we're going to let x plus 2 equal the second integer. All right, let's do some examples. The first problem says find three consecutive integers such that 5 times the sum in the first and the third is 16 greater than 9 times the second. All right, first thing we need to do is set up let statements. We're finding three consecutive integers. All right, they're not consecutive even, they're not consecutive odd, they're just consecutive. So when we set up our let statements, x is going to equal the first number, x plus 1 is going to equal the second number, and x plus 2 will equal the third number. All right, this is showing that the numbers are one right after the other, when we add 1 and we add 2. All right, now we can use these let statements and set up an equation. All right, find three consecutive integers such that. Five times the sum of the first and the third. All right, we're doing five times the sum. Sum would be addition, so we're adding the first and the third. All right, well, the first one is x. The third is x plus 2. All right, so that shows the sum of the first and the third. We're doing five times that. Right, so five times x plus x plus 2. All right, now we're setting it equal. Five times the sum of the first and the third is it's 16 greater than 9 times the second, all right? So we're doing 16 greater than 9 times the second. Well, the second is x plus 1, so we're doing 9 times x plus 1. All right, we have set up the equation. Now we can go ahead and solve. All right, when you do this, make sure you follow your correct order of operations, parentheses, 
exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. All right, so let's do what's in these parentheses first. X plus X, we can simplify to say 2X. All right, so we have 2X plus 2. That's all that can be solved as far as parentheses, but now we can distribute in. All right, 5 times 2X is 10X. 5 times 2 is 10. 9 times X is 9X, and 9 times 1 is 9. Okay, now let's combine like terms. There are no terms to combine on this side, so we'll keep it over here. 16 plus 9 will give us um, 25 plus 9X. All right, now we can start moving our variables over and moving our constants. I'm going to keep my variables positive, so I'm going to subtract 9x from both sides. 10x minus 9x just gives me x. And then I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. 25 minus 10 is 15. So x equals 15. That means the first integer in this equation is 15. Alright? If x is equal to 15, then x plus 1 is going to be 16, and x plus 2 is going to be 17. All right, so we have solved for our consecutive integers. All right, that was a consecutive integer problem. The next one that we're going to look at is also a consecutive integer problem. All right, this one we have four. All right, so if we're finding four consecutive integers, then let's go ahead and set up our let statements first. We've got let x equal the first. If they're consecutive, that means they're one right after the other. All right, so x plus one is going to be equal to the second. x plus two is the third. And x plus three is the fourth. All right, now that we've set up the let statement, let's go ahead and solve. Such that 5 times the sum of the first and the fourth. All right, we're adding the first and the fourth. That's x plus x plus 3. And we're doing 5 times that. All right, so 5 times the sum of the first and the fourth is 1 greater than 8 times the third. Well, the third is x plus 2, so we have 8 times x plus 2. Alright, let's go ahead and simplify like terms and solve. In this first set of parentheses, x plus x is going to be 2x. Alright, so we have 2x plus 3. That's all that can be simplified within the parentheses, so let's go ahead and distribute. 5 times 2x is 10x. 5 times 3 is 15. 8 times x is 8x. And 8 times 2 is 16. All right, I'm going to keep my um, coefficient positive by subtracting 8x from both sides. All right, 10x minus 8x is 2x. We can go ahead and combine like terms over here. 1 plus 16 is 17. All right, now that my variable is on one side, I've got to get the coefficients to the other. I'm going to do that by subtracting 15 from both sides. So I have 2x equals 2, which means that x equals 1. All right, now if x equals 1, that means the second integer is 1 plus 1, which is 2. The third one is 1 plus 2, which is 3. And the fourth one is 1 plus 3, which is 4. So my four consecutive integers are 1, 2, 3, and 4. All right, make sure that when you're solving these problems that you do come up with consecutive integers, that your let statements reflect your answer. Okay, make sure that your answers are reasonable. Make sure that they make sense. All right, this last example, I'm going to help you set up the let statements, and then I'm going to have you solve, set up the equation and solve them by yourself. All right, in this case, we have three consecutive even integers. All right, remember, even integers are two units apart. All right, so x is going to be our first integer, but to show that these numbers are two units apart, x plus 2 is going to be our second number, and x plus 4 is going to be our third number. All right, this shows us that whatever we get for x, the next number is two numbers away. Okay, that shows even integers. 
I'm going to have you go ahead and set up the equation and solve it on your own. We'll check it when we come into class um, and look at your notes. Um, make sure that your answer is reasonable. Again, we're looking for consecutive even integers. So if you come up with a solution that is not even numbers, you need to go back and recheck the problem and try again. Okay, go ahead and complete this and we'll check it back in class. 